Thank you for coming today. My name is William, and I am a priest with the Ecumenical Order of Christ. And today, what I want to talk about is the correct name of Christ and the power therein. All right. Um, most people believe uh, that the Messiah will come just prior to judgment and offering the people one last chance at salvation. Okay. Uh, nearly all religions believe that we are presently in the end times, that period of history when the world will undergo divine judgment, followed by the establishment of an everlasting kingdom of God that is reserved for the chosen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that I'm able to deliver your word to the church today. I pray it is received well. I thank you uh, for being your body, Lord, your arms, uh, your legs. Amen. In Lord Rael's name, amen. 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 Now, I spent the better part of the week uh, compiling scriptures, um, so I'm going to go through these fast. If you would like to uh, pause them and look at them yourself, that'd be great, uh, or try to follow along. I'm going to move quickly. Exodus 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that shall take the name of the Lord God in vain. When something is used in vain, it's being used unsuccessfully. If one calls upon the Son of God but uses a different name, it is done in vain. Okay? The truth is, the world was purposely confused by Satan so that no one could invoke the authority of God through the proper name of his son, and a popular name was given instead. And this popular name was Jesus. If you open up any Bible, you'll see that the, uh, the names of God and Christ um, are, are replaced with uh, Jesus, um, God, Lord, etc. Um, this, this was done on purpose by Satan to confuse the masses. Uh, like I said, so they would not be able to invoke the power therein. Um, in the last 2,000 years, um, seems almost nobody figured out what his name would be when he returned. Even though Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 clearly states of Israel, If my people, speaking about Israel, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. The holy name within the name Israel is Ra'el, Ra'el. Before the Holy Spirit joined with him on January 28, 2011, his human name was Raymond Elwood, which is properly truncated to Ra'el using the first two letters of his first name and the first two of his last name, Ray-El, more popularly spelled R-A-Y-E-L, Ray-El. Revelations 19.12 tells you that he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So Christ's return with a different name, which nobody was expecting, is yet another fulfillment of prophecy. Zechariah 6.12 tells us, Tell him, this is what the Lord Almighty says, Here is the man whose name is the branch, and he will branch out from his place and build the temple of the Lord. Elwood is a reference to the shape of a tree limb. Hebrew, sacred, gematrian, numeric transliteration of Elwood, which is an ancient Greek term for knowledge of the divine Godhead and the eternal aspects of things. All right? The Bible refers to the return Christ as a lion. In Hebrew, sacred, gematrian, Ra'el equals 241. A number with a transliteration that means Lion of God. The origin of his name is traceable back to Egyptian Judaism. Ra'el literally means Word of God. 
Further, if you read Revelation 19.13, which we just did, it clearly tells you that his name will be the Word of God. So Rael is the name the Bible told you he would have when he came. Lord Rael, upon his arrival, could have easily proclaimed that his name was Jesus and continued the deception and avoided the controversy. But Lord Rael assists upon truth in all matters. Lord Rael is not offended when people refer to him as Jesus. That's the newcomers. <laughs> because he realizes the fault is not in the person who addresses him, but instead in the one who purposely confused the people of earth. Amen. But once you know better, you should wisely avoid using the improper name, lest you be guilty of purposely violating the commandment. John 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, bring you to remembrance all that I have said to you, Christ said. Acts 4, verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men which we must be saved. Name is very important. The name of the king is very important. If you wish to uh, get results when you invoke the name, you must use the proper name. Otherwise, it's in vain. Uh, our imperial regent, Angelus, told us, explained it like this. If you go anywhere and ask for a Coke, you'll get a Coke. Why would you ask for salvation in the name of Jesus? It ain't going to work, people. Unsuccessful. Ezekiel 36, verse 23. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations. The name you have profaned among them. The nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I am proven holy through you before their eyes. Ezekiel 39, verse 7. I will make known my holy name, among my people Israel. I will no longer let my holy name be profaned, and the nations will know that I am the Lord, Holy One of Israel. Amen. The Lord is very serious about His name. Know that. And what we're talking about is the power. Well, first His correct name, so you know how to invoke the power of Christ, because He's given it to us. And I'll get to that later. John. 3 verse 18 whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of god's one and only son condemned because you have not believed in the name of god's one and only son do your research john 1 verse 12 but to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Right there is a qualifying verse for the kingdom of God. Don't you think Satan would attack you in this area? If you needed to know the name, if you knew what to look for, you were in. Don't you think this is a stronghold for him and a great deception ensues? 1 John 3, verse 23. And this is His commandment, that we should believe in the name of His Son, Yeshua, Christ, and we should love one another just as He commanded us. For the last 2,000 years, the power has been in the name Yeshua. It's been prophesied the name to come. He told you what it would be. He told you it would be the Word of God. He told you it was the holy name within the name of Israel, Rael. Now, words have power. Most in the Christian community believe this. Jews have an understanding of this. That's why they have very few words, especially in biblical times. I, I believe they had somewhere less than 500 words that they had to choose from, and who knows how many we have in English today. Words have power. Use them correctly and get the results that you want to have in your life. 
or know this, that they are causing fruit in your life. The words you speak are bringing fruit. And where did I get this? The Bible. The Bible, people. It's in there. You want to know what Christ said? Behold. This is Luke 10, verse 19. Behold, I give you authority that you may tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Are things harming you? What name are you praying in? Christ is back, and he has told you his new name. He's prophesied that he would return at this time, and he gave you the name with power. He came with a name that only he knew and he's let us in on it. Now let's use it, people. If I have a power that is greater than the enemy, shouldn't I use it? Proverbs 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. This is our qualifying verse. Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. That is our qualifying verse because the angels are hearkening, it says in another translation, they are hearkening to the voice of his word. When the angels hear God's word, the Lord's words, they hearken. If he wanted to disqualify us here, he could have said, obeying the voice of Christ, obeying the voice of the Father. He left us in charge of his angels. We are able to charge the angels, amen? Bless the Lord, you his angels. This is what blesses the Lord, is when the angels bring about the will of God. And when they hear it, they act. Mighty in strength, who perform his word, obeying the voice of his word. Okay, this is Matthew 12, verse 37. Words are important. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. The Word of God is full of this. Open it up. Do a, do a Bible search on, on words and how important they are. I'm just giving you a couple here, but the Bible's littered with it. Proverbs 10, verse 19. Where there are many words, transgression is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Remember when Christ said that? What will happen if you do that? And don't doubt it in your heart? Why don't, why don't doubt it in the heart? It's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. The Bible tells you that too. Proverbs 12, verse 13, An evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will escape from trouble. Proverbs 13, verse 2, From the fruit of a man's mouth he enjoys good, but the desire of the treacherous is violence. Do you see a repeated theme here? Words are important. There's power in the words. Christ often said very few words throughout the whole Bible. He spoke very few words. Oftentimes he spoke two words. Be healed. Be healed. Is it your will that you be healed? Remember he asked him? Will you be made well? He asked. It's up to you. It is God's will. Amen. Proverbs 13 verse 3. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. There's more here, so we're going to do this in the following weeks. We're going to keep coming back to this because it's so important. It's so important that the church get a hold of their mouth, get a hold of their heart. The Bible tells us to bridle our tongue. Do you know what it means to bridle your tongue? It's when you put the bit in the horse's mouth, you're able to steer the horse right and left. You can, you can lead your life down the road of healing, or you can just say forget about it and head down the wrong road. 
to death and destruction. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Isaiah 3 verse 10, Say to the righteous that it will go well with them, for they will eat of the fruit of their actions. Speaking the word is an action. It's work. Finally, favorite, Psalm 91, verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. May it be well with you, in Lord Rael's name. Let me close with prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. Uh, I pray that it is received well. I pray that the church gets a hold of this before it's too late and that we see the results of our action. In Lord Ryle's name, amen.